Father Philip Begley. I'm the senior pastor here at St. Ignatius Antiochian Orthodox Church in Franklin, Tennessee. And we're making this video, especially for those of you who are newcomers, who will be visiting us for the first time. We want to give you an idea of what to expect before you walk through those doors. One thing you'll notice right away is people kissing images of Christ, the Virgin Mary, and the saints. And to some people, this is scandalous. It seems like idolatry. But in reality, what we're doing is no different than if I or someone else were to take a picture of their loved one from their nightstand and kiss it. What they're doing is expressing their love and respect for that person. It's the very same thing here in the church with those images that we call icons. You'll also see people coming and lighting candles and placing them in front of those icons. And that has a twofold meaning. First of all, anytime we light a candle, it reminds us of the light of Christ in our lives. The second thing it reminds us of is our prayers arising to God. People will light candles and say a prayer for someone who is sick, someone who may be traveling, someone who has a special need, or somebody perhaps who has passed away that they want God to remember, and they're praying for their soul and for their salvation. Once we walk through this room that I'm currently sitting in called the narthex, we then go into the main part of the church, which is called the nave. You'll notice right away there are lots of chairs, but they're not being used very often. Reason for that is that when we walk into the nave of the church, we are in the presence of God. It's no different than if you were to be in the presence of a major dignitary. If the president walked into the room, out of respect, you would stand up. So when we walk into the nave, God is present on the altar table, and so we remain standing in reverence for him. There are specific points in the divine liturgy when you should always remain standing, and they are the little entrance where we process out as clergy with the gospel book, also at the reading of the Holy Gospel, and also when we process with the gifts of the bread and the wine around the congregation and bring them to the altar table. You should remain standing for that entire procession and also for the consecration of the gifts, the transforming of the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Christ by God's grace. Another thing that you will often see in the church during the divine services are people making the sign of the cross. And what we do in the Orthodox Church is take the first three fingers of your right hand representative of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the last two fingers of the hand will be pressed against the palm, and that represents the two natures of Christ, that he is fully God and fully man. And then we place our fingers to our forehead, to the center of our chest, around the heart, to the right and to the left to complete the motion. And we do this whenever the Trinity is invoked in the services, or when the precious and life-giving cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is mentioned in the hymnography of the services as well. You'll notice during the divine services that I am not doing everything on my own. This harkens back to the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who said, wherever two or three are gathered, I will be in the midst of them. So I as a priest cannot do the service alone. I need the congregation's participation. So we have chanters who will sing in Byzantine chant. We also have a four part choir that sings during the divine liturgy and we utilize them and the congregation sings along accompanying those two groups. The idea is we want to worship together as the body of Christ as a whole. So whenever I offer a prayer, there's always an amen response or a Lord have mercy response, a back and forth, showing that unity, that importance of the entire congregation working together in harmony. This is a family friendly congregation. We have a number of young families in our congregation and so I invite families to come and participate fully in the services. Yes, there are times when services will be a little bit noisy as a result, but we have this room, again, the narthex, where we close the doors and allow the parents a space to calm down their children and then bring them back into the worship afterwards. So we want all of the children and the families to feel welcome and that they have a place here and to not feel uncomfortable. We want us all to be worshiping together as the body of Christ as a whole, not separated from one another. One important thing to note about Orthodox liturgy is we always offer Holy Communion the Eucharist during the Divine Liturgy, but this is only for Orthodox Christians. And the reason for that is if you're going to receive the body and blood of Christ, you are saying to the priest and to God that you are agreeing with all the teachings of the church. So before you actually receive the sacrament, there is a period of catechism, of instruction in the teachings of the church to make sure that you are making an informed decision before you receive those gifts. 
The prayers of the church teach us that this can either be for the healing of soul and body or for our condemnation. So we want to receive them worthily and make sure that we're prepared. So please don't take offense. You are still welcome to come forward. You're still welcome to receive some of the blessed bread on the side and to ask questions and to start that catechism process so that you can receive in the future. So your first time in an Orthodox church can be somewhat overwhelming. It's a very different style of worship than you will find in most Christian churches in this country. And so it's not uncommon to feel a little bit uncomfortable, but we have ushers, we have acolytes, we have experienced people who are around that can help guide you during the services if you have any questions to lead you where you need to go, when you need to stand, when you need to sit. So don't be shy. This is just a little bit to talk about what to expect on a Sunday morning. There are certainly more things that we can go over, and if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me or to one of the clergy after a divine service and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you or to provide some resources for you to continue to learn more about Holy Orthodoxy. I'm looking forward to God willing seeing you sometime in the future and God bless you and grant you many years.